insets are a great way to highlight a certain section of data from a larger data set, and they're extremely easy to create within DataGraph. We're going to create this first graph using natural gas price data we downloaded from the internet that relies on the default color scheme within the program. Next, we will modify both the line color and the background colors. And finally, create this third graphic that has a global variable that allows us to view changes in prices over time. We're going to start by downloading some data from the U.S. Energy Information Administration. This is data on natural gas spot and futures prices. I'm going to go ahead and click all of this data to download. Select Graph. And you'll see all the data that we're going to download. Click that link to download the data. Now we're going to open a new data graph file. And we'll simply drag the downloaded CSV file into the data graph data table. You can double click the gray bar across the top to expand the data graph window. And now we're going to go ahead and set the titles for our columns. You can right click when you see the data that should be the column headings and see how that gets automatically populated. There's also some data in these first few rows that we may want to keep that has information on where this data came from. To do that, I'm going to open up my column definitions, which allows me to see a list of all of the data that I imported. And I'm also going to go ahead and click that shortcut to add a, um, a field that I can put all this text data into, a comment block. I'm going to copy that data or the, the information in those fields into the comment block. And the first few things that get pasted there are actually the titles of the columns, which I don't need. I'm going to delete that. And we'll go ahead and drag this comment block up to the top of my list of columns. Now I can go ahead and just highlight those extra rows and remove them. The data headings that were imported are a bit long for what I uh, would like in my file. I'm going to actually be using these headings for my legend names for each of the sets of data. So I'm going to go ahead and shorten these and I can just do that from my uh, column definition list. So the first one being the futures contract four. These didn't quite come in uh, order of one to four so I need to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. Now I can put these in the order I would like them. And finally, the um, Henry Hub spot price also. I will change that column to be a, a shorter name. Now the next thing is that my column types as they were imported need to be uh, converted again so that DataGraph will use them appropriately. And notice that I just changed the day to be a date column and suddenly the data that I'm plotting is now understood correctly. So I actually can see, uh, for example, futures contract four is being plotted and I'm converting all of these to make sure that they're number, they're interpreted as number fields. Notice how there are some dates that have uh, data missing, particularly for the futures contracts. And I'd like to show you the impact of this on our uh, data that's being plotted using the the uh, plot command using the loop tool. So the loop tool allows us to zoom in on a section of data and first of all if we take two fingers and drag um, left and right or up and down this changes the size of both the area that's uh, or either the area that of uh, section of the graph that's being magnified or the magnification tool itself. So in any case I want to remove those gaps. So you can click bridge gaps in data within the detail of the drawing command itself. And now you can see how the line does not show any of those gaps. So we can go ahead and turn off the loop tool. Close the detail view of our plot command. And I'm going to add a legend here. 
uh, and, and get the settings for this plot command the way I would like them. I'm going to remove the X label from my legend name. Now I'm going to minimize my drawing command. And I'm going to use this one drawing command as a basis for drawing the remaining data sets. To make a copy or a clone of this existing command, I'm going to hold down the Option key and then click and drag with the mouse. Then I can change the Y uh, column, what's being drawn. So again, I'm just for each one of these, I'm cloning the commands, hitting the Option key, clicking and dragging. So now I have my five drawing commands of all my data, and I want to also change the color of these since by default, the color is all set to the pen color, which is simply black, again, by default. So I'm changing these to line color one, two, three, four, and five. And you'll notice how the data is being plotted from 1993 to 2016. Let's say I'd like to zoom in on a section of this. I can click on the mouse and drag across the graphic. So now I've highlighted a certain section of the graph that gets zoomed in on. And if my, I move my mouse down to the bottom towards the x-axis, then that white section of the bar will show me what's zoomed in on. And I can also click towards the end of that white bar to change the area just by dragging with the mouse. Let's say, though, that I was interested particularly in the last year of data. I can add a magnify command that was in the toolbar, using a shortcut in the toolbar up above. And this gives me a zone of the, of the region of the graph that I can show in a magnified view on the graphic itself. And again, I'm going to focus in particular on the last year of data and drag the actual magnified graph and just again using the mouse I'm just dragging and moving this I want to go ahead go ahead and also uh, move my legend to the right of my graph so that's not in the way of my magnify view and I'd like to also remove the grid lines I can right click on the graphic to get a shortcut to remove the grid lines the lines are a little bit dim here, so I want to go ahead and increase the size just a bit, and I can do that across all my lines using the pen variable. Note, I could also change them individually, but this makes it a lot easier to change all of the line widths. And the next thing I'd like to do here is actually add a, a horizontal line, what we also refer to as a Y line. So again, this is another drawing command, the lines command. And just to illustrate, I'm going to type the number 2. So you can see now how a, a black line shows up in our graphic as well as in our inset at two. And what I'd really like to do is to show the last value of the Henry Hub spot price from June 20th. So I can just type that number in there, just again, initially to illustrate this. And let's set this to the same color that the Henry Hub data itself is set to. And we'll give this a dashed line. I can also add a label to this line, and I'm going to do that using another drawing command. Again, everything in data graph that's on your graphing canvas is going to be uh, controlled by a command. So here we have a label command, and I want to also set this to the numerical value and again have the color all set to line color one, both the arrow itself and the text. Now notice how on our inset, the axis labels are set above the box, and that's because the, uh, the magnify command will purposefully move the location of the axis to make sure that it does not get in the way of the connect lines that are connecting the region, showing what's being magnified. So what I'd like to do is actually um, illustrate what happens when I remove these connect lines. And you see that since the lines aren't there, it goes back to what's more typical, having the x-axis shown below. And I, for this graph, I, I prefer that look. And again, I can just use the mouse to change the, the region that's being displayed. 
We can also add some titles to our graph. Go ahead and give this natural gas prices and we'll also add a Y title. Now I'm going to create a second graphic where I customize the color scheme that I'm using. So I add a graph which gives me the thumbnails across the top of my screen and I'm going to uh, click where I started and clone that graph. So now I have two copies of that so I can keep my original but also again make modifications to my color scheme. And one uh, handy thing to do when you're working with a lot of commands is at this point, since I'm not using the data, I can switch the location of the data and the commands. So now I have all my commands along the left-hand side of the screen. I can adjust my graph a little here for the smaller window. And I'd also like to organize my drawing commands a little bit. So I'm going to highlight all of the commands that are related to the futures and group those. There we go. And I'll do the same thing for the commands that are being used to display data related to the Henry Hub prices. So that includes both the command as well as the labels. And I click the group icon again, that shortcut to put those all into a group. So this is really both for organization of my information as well as it allows me to easily exclude data from my graphic if I want to visually focus on a certain set of data. It makes it easy to do that. Next we're going to modify our color scheme in the style settings. Recall how we set the colors individually to line one, line two, and so forth. But within the style setting are the specific colors that those, you can think of them almost as color variables are set to. And again, we use those uh, also in our annotations. There are these presets here that I'm changing just to show you, for example, that if I change what those line colors are set to, then it changes globally for everything set to line color one, the lines as well as the annotations. I'd like to use some grayscale colors here and the colors on the right hand side, which are uh, technically called the fill colors, give me some grayscale values to use. And I'm just simply dragging these from one location to the next. So it's convenient sometimes to be able to drag between the various color tiles. I'd like the color for line one to be something a little more vibrant. So I'm going to change that to a blue. And again, it changes both the color of the line as well as the annotation for the Henry Hub data. I also want to change my background colors. And I can do that uh, from the canvas settings. I'll change the background to a color using the color picker. And I'm going to go ahead and use a shade of yellow. Not quite this bright though. We'll go ahead and tone that down a bit. Close the color picker. And the within my axis, I'd actually just like that to stay white. So I'm going to change that. Um, but I'd like the inset to be a, a color, actually the same color I have on the outline. To do that, I go to the inset itself and change the fill to a solid color. Again, I'm going to use the color picker, but this time I'm going to use this little eyedropper because I don't remember exactly the settings from before. I'll click on that color that I selected within the graph and then it updates the color appropriately. Go ahead and close the magnify command and my canvas settings and switch this back so my data is back on the left hand side. Now if you recall the value for 2.74 is something that I typed in manually after looking up what the Henry Hub spot price was on June 20th. I'm going to add a, a way of actually dynamically determining that. First let me organize a little bit my, my data here. 
and we'll go ahead and create a group in the same way that I grouped some of my drawing commands. This is going to allow me to just hide for now the natural gas price data. And I'm going to create or, or use a new column type called an, an a uh, excuse me, a plot action column type. And this will allow me to interpolate a value based on a particular date. And because I know that there are some dates that I have missing data in, that's why I'm using this interpolate column. Otherwise, there's also a mapping type of column that I could use that data graph contains. But in any case, the uh, plot action will work perfectly, again, with this interpolate functionality. And I've set my X and my Y columns. And I've given this a name now. Look up Henry. And what I'm missing is a way to specify the locations at this point, the date that it's going to look up the actual price data. I'm going to use a global variable, specifically a slider. We'll go ahead and call this pull date. And this is going to allow me to, again, have more dynamic um, action within my graphic. And the range, uh, it's showing you below if I, when I was highlighting that section, the format for dates to give a date range. So I give the year, colon, the month, and then another colon, and then the day. So I can give a beginning year and an end year. And I'm going to go from the beginning of 20, uh, 2015 to approximately the current date in 2016. And so now you can see how this as the slider moves, the value for the variable pull date changes, but I still need to specify this location. And I cannot use a variable within the plot action command itself. So I'm going to create a column that I'm just going to set one row in that column. And I'm going to set the value within that row to the variable pull date because Datagraph recognizes both variables as well as numerical data within tab the data table. And now I've set that as the location I want to interpolate. And sure enough, it's now dynamically changing as I change the pull date. And I'm going to go ahead and set this. I can also just set it manually to 620. And sure enough, the value that you see here is the same as the one that I had typed in. And I can create similar columns to look up values for the remaining data sets within my, uh, within my data table. I'm going to highlight one, change the name as appropriate, and within the detail view, change which column it's using to interpolate. I'm highlighting again, hitting the option key, dragging. When you see that little green plus symbol, you know your option dragging. And now we have a value for each of the various data sets. And I can go ahead and organize this data as well, highlighting it, hitting the group key, a group shortcut. And we'll go ahead and call this lookup. And now you can see all of these values change as I change the value for the slider. Now we want to connect this into the graphic itself, use these variables in our graph. And to do this first, let's clone the current graph so we can keep this version and go ahead and make these changes in a second version in case we decide we want a, a version of this that doesn't have the uh, connection to the slider. So I'm going to start with this dashed line for the Henry Hub spot price. And instead of it being a, a list that I'm typing in, I'm changing this to the values within the column. And there's only one row, so there's one line shown. And you can see how the location of that dashed line changed within the inset because it's no longer set to 2.74. The pull date variable is not set right now to 620. I'm using here a different way of specifying a label. 
rather than using a label drawing command, I can actually set a label for this dashed line itself now that I have a column that contains this value. And I have to change the position to be more visible on the right hand side. And I'll again change the color here to be consistent with the other data for Henry Hub. Move this over to give a little bit more room. And now both the line and the label are dynamically changing in the inset as well as the graph itself. Notice, however, that it's not entirely clear where the date is that the dashed line corresponds to. So I'm going to add another lines command. This will be an X line. And I'm going to set the location of this to the pull date variable. So now I have a black line that will show me the intersection of these two points so I can see where this dashed line corresponds to in terms of the dates. I'd also like to add a label that will dynamically indicate what the date is. So I'm using the shortcut for the label. And the uh, in this location, I can specify the X and Y location of my label, and I want that X location to change with my pull date. So I've set that to the location itself using, again, the global variable. The Y location of 10 is outside of the range of my inset, so let's go ahead and set this to 3.2. And there you see now the label is both in the graph and the inset. I'd like to make that a straight line. And I'm going to go ahead and set what I want this label to say. Um, to illustrate how variables are set here, I'm going to just first type in pull date. And you'll see now it's just showing me the string value. I, I don't want the text pull date um, to specify a variable here in this label. I use this drop down menu on the right hand side. And you'll see all the variables available to you. This is referred to as a token. And let's delete the, not the token, but let's delete the string that I typed in and now the actual variable pull date is being shown. Next I'm going to go ahead and uh, add one more Y line. I cloned my Henry Hub Y line and I'm going to set this one uh, to futures contract one. And we won't do all the futures contract for this. We'll just show you how to set one up. Uh, but you could do this for all of the futures contracts, so they could all have a dynamic line that would be moving with the uh, with the slider. But here you see now these are set up, and this bottom right hand corner is starting to look a little bit uh, messy because there's things that are shown in the inset, but they're too close together on the graph itself. So I can go into the detail view, and when there's an inset, you'll see these little icons on the right hand side where you can specify whether things are shown in the graph, in the inset, or in both. And I'm clicking the little icon all the way to the right that says that for this command, I only want to see it within the inset itself. So these now are removed from the graph and everything looks a lot cleaner. A couple of finishing touches I'd like to put on here. First of all, I don't like the way that this label is moving out of the inset, and I can modify that using this label drawing command over on the right hand side. I can specify this as a negative to move where that's oriented. Also, if I drag now, change my pull date, bring it all the way over to the right hand side, the futures contract one and Henry Hub spot, pra spot price overlap. And you can see how this number is being shown in gray. And this is an indication that the futures contract is being drawn on the screen after the Henry Hub price. And I want the Henry Hub price to always be drawn last. So I can go ahead and move this up actually just into this group for the futures data, which also makes sense. And now you can see how the Henry Hub price is always shown on the top here. So now I have a completed graphic that I can use to uh, demonstrate this data, present this data, and explore it. I hope that you enjoy this video. And if you have any questions or comments, please contact us at 
help at visualdatatools.com.